Okay. Um, yes, so Kai will give a demonstration about the uh, components and talk a little bit more about the uh, newly renovated um, um, UI library documentation that uses uh, Storybook. Uh, and then I will go over the exercises for this, um, for this assignment. Um, so Joe, I think you are ready to uh, share your screen. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, everyone should be able to see my screen now. Yes. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe Cooper. I'm a UX designer here at DHS2. I'm just going to give an introduction to the DHS2 design system, what it's for, what it can help us with, and so on. And then, as Deborah said, Kai will give an introduction to how we've implemented it today in the UI library. So a design system is a collection of principles and components that are common between the DHS2 applications. And we set up the system to kind of encourage consistency, uh, the use of the same types of components, and the use of the same patterns and principles so that users get a consistent experience whenever they're using a DHS2 application, regardless of what that application is for, they should all have a, some common elements. So that's the, the goal of the design system is to set up that cohesion. Uh, the design system is hosted on GitHub. So the documentation is here, DHS2 slash design system. And it's broken up into two different sections. The first section is principles. So these are guidelines that are a little bit more intangible. They kind of talk about how applications that run on the DHS2 platform, how they should look, how they should work, how they should communicate and so on. And the second part is the components. So that's a collection of user interface components that have certain usages and uh, like action usages like buttons, uh, displaying data, different types. So these components are organized into different sections based on their usage. And each component goes through and has some guidelines about how that should be used in an application. So I'll go through some examples to make that clearer as that's just an abstract overview. But first, the principles. Today, though, they cover six areas and uh, it's constantly expanding. So the principles kind of lay out in this example, how the content should be worded in DHS2 applications and how we should communicate. Again, the goal here is to establish a level of consistency so that as users move around DHS2 and they use different applications, they feel that every, you know, the content and the way we communicate is consistent and that establishes trust, that establishes a kind of easy way to understand, it means we're all using the same terms and so on. These guidelines also highlight areas where we can be user friendly and so on. So in this communication section, we have some examples uh, about kind of simplicity of language. I, I'm not gonna go through all of the examples, but just to say that there are examples in these principle sections that show what not to do and what you should do. So before working on or while working on DHS2 applications, it can be useful to go through and refer back to these principles. These principles here address uh, keeping the user informed with feedback, uh, what to do if you don't have any data to display, uh, the tone of voice to use, so how technical we should be speaking to kind of present data in the easiest understandable way. 
So that, that's an example of the content. Uh, there's some examples here for layout. So this covers some common DHS2 application layouts and when they should be used. And also gives some guidelines about how to organize components to make them as easy to use as possible. So there's lots of information here. And I would really urge anyone working on DHS2 applications to refer to these principles and kind of get to know them before moving further. So with the components, we can talk about, let's talk about the button. So a button is a component in the design system. And when you go into the button page, you can see that there's a small introduction about kind of a one sentence, what, it, what is a button? Buttons are used for triggering actions. There are different types of buttons in the design system. So here in the first section, the documentation covers the different types of buttons, like basic, primary, secondary, and so on. And then there's a guideline for when to use each type of button. So this guideline tells us that the basic button is the most often used button that will suit the majority of actions. The guidelines tell us that for primary buttons, we should use sparingly. Rarely should there be more than a single primary button per page. So following these guidelines, it's quite important. Uh, it's not just about getting the components from the UI library and kind of using them for different things because that would confuse a user. For example, a destructive button must only be used for destructive actions like deleting or removing or so on. If an application used a destructive button for a completely different type of action, for example, saving data, then that would be a very confusing experience for users. If some applications had red buttons for saving and some applications had blue buttons for saving, that would be very difficult. So it's really important to understand and follow these guidelines. And we follow these guidelines ourselves in all of our applications that we develop in the core. So it's good if uh, core developers and third party developers all working together consistently, I think it's really good. So the, the documentation goes through other options that the components provide. For example, buttons can be toggled and there will always be some accompanying text talking about when these options should be used. So for example, with icons, you can optionally include an icon in button. And this text here tells you to use an icon to supplement the text. The documentation will also cover different states that are available. For example, buttons can be in a disabled state. And then there's some documentation about when uh, buttons should be in that state. So use disabled buttons when an action is being prevented. So that's one example. We can look at another example of a more complex uh, component. For example, the transfer. So the transfer is a data entry type of component. So this is a component that the design system provides that allows users to select options from a list. So wherever in your applications, users need to make a complex selection from a list, you know that a transfer is the right component for that. And in usually in the usage guidelines, which is the first section of each component page, there'll be a short sentence to make sure, kind of a check to make sure this is the right component. So as I said, this one is whenever a user needs to make a complex selection. Simple selections can be achieved with checkboxes, radio buttons, or a select. So if you actually have a simple selection to make, you could instead go and check out the select component. So and then the usage guidelines at the top cover some use cases that are particularly suitable for a transfer. And then it covers the basic functionality and the composition. And again, that section with the options. So headers are an option for the transfer. And there's some text here about when and where you should use headers, footers, 
and so on. So as I said, these components are organized by usage. So all of these components are for performing actions. All of these components are for giving feedback to the user. And at the end of the design system, there's some short guidance on kind of getting started designing and building. So this is kind of a reference of what I've been covering just now, but it lays out kind of the three important steps to designing DHS2 applications, which is getting to know the principles that I covered in the first step, uh, understanding the use case, so making some kind of research or finding out or establishing what your application will be doing. Doing this is an important step because it helps you to know how that application should be designed. And then when you move on to the design stage, that's when you refer to the design system component library, where you can use the, uh, the appropriate components for the actions you need to carry out. Feedback is always welcome. So if there's a component that you feel is missing, if there's a common use case that is coming up in applications that the design system does not provide a component for, then we are very interested in uh, expanding the library. So please submit any feedback you have, or if one of the components is missing a feature, then we'll definitely keep that in mind. Uh, we try to make sure that all of the components in the library are reusable. So we do not add components that are only used in one application or only used in maybe one or two use cases. The design system is intended to be a very flexible and kind of wide ranging library. So the components that you find here are components that are very commonly used. I think uh, Kai will cover this in his discussion but if there's a component that perhaps is, or if a set of components that is perhaps quite a complex use case, then you might find that in the UI library as a recipe instead. So rather than kind of making this design system quite overwhelming with lots and lots of different variations, we've tried to keep it as simple as possible and kind of contain it. And the recipes and tutorials can kind of come on top of that of how to build a complex data table, for example. So yes, that's the design system. I think that about covers it. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. If not, that's me. Sure. Let's see, yeah. All right. Everyone see okay? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, so to implement the design system in, in your applications, we've built this library of UI components so that you can uh, take them and, you know, kind of enact these, these uh, consistent reusable components in your applications to uh, make the appearance consistent. Um, to use the same kind of patterns and principles that are described uh, in the design system and just to make a consistent experience for the users. And also these things provide a lot of useful features that um, will end up in a number of different applications in DHS2. And so to give you an idea of uh, what it looks like and what it is like to use this UI library, we can go to the uh, developer portal and go to the components and libraries documentation. And then here you'll find the UI components library. We have this documentation page here with some information like getting started, how to add it to your React application. Um, and there is some API information on the different components in here that you can use. But uh, what I've been working on recently is this documentation system here using Storybook to create demos for all of these components so that you can see what they look like, see the different variations that they can use, and um, easily integrate them into your project. 
So in case you kind of forget any of the things that I say here and kind of giving a quick tour of this documentation, uh, the opening page here gives you some instructions about the features that you can find and ways to explore these components and how to use them in your projects. And so you'll find some of the same pages as the, the previous page that we came from in here, like getting started so that they're in the same place as these kind of component demos. And you'll find these demos of things like the button that Joe is going over here and the stocks page here. Um, initially, when you click on things, you'll see individual examples of them, like the secondary, primary, destructive, and basic types. But you'll find a lot of information in the stocks tab here, where you can find some description, instructions on how to uh, incorporate in your project, a demo, and uh, a big list of the, of the props that you use for these React components to control them. And so um, as much as possible, we try to have descriptions available for what these things do. Like um, you can look at the code that's here that makes this button um, once you import it from the UI library. You can give it a name, an on-click handler, and a value. Um, and then you can toggle these interactive controls here to add things like the primary variant to it. And you can see that turn up in the code sample here. Or you can make it small, and it'll be smaller. And turn off small and turn on large. And a number of other things here, like the uh, you can see that there are different types that you can use, which is important if you're using the button for a form or just for triggering a regular action on the page. So um, there are a number of other features in here that uh, can show you more information about how to use these components. But just to give you a demo of how to integrate it in your project, we can take a look at the getting started page. We want to add the UI library as a dependency. So I have this project here that I just started up that is uh, the same thing as what you get when you initialize a new application using the um, D2 app scripts in it. It loads this simple thing. And so we can add the uh, UI library by doing yarn add dhis2 slash UI. Oh, interesting. Yarn add dhis2 slash UI. That will add it to the project. And then we can import it here. Or let's say, let's take a button. Um, so we can find that, import a button into our project. And let's just go ahead and copy this large button here. Go to our application. Add the button, start up the project again. And here we have the button. So that's how you integrate it in your projects. I'll show you some more features about um, the documentation system to investigate how to use these components as you're using them in your project. You can see these code samples here. These, are, these should be useful for you um, as you copy and paste them into your application. There'll be a number of examples here 
that you can browse just to visually look at different things. Like you can see these icon and toggled variants that Joe described in the design system as well. This button component has some of these descriptions written into it, um, but these aren't fully complete with what the design system describes. And so you should always keep referring to the design system for usage guidelines for these things. Um, we can take a look at something like the other add-ons in here. So if you go to the Canvas tab, you can look at individual uh, demonstrations here. And you have the same controls that you have in the other section that dynamically control what, the, what happens to the button. You can see code samples for what it looks like under the JSX tab. This one is dynamic. And so it, it kind of renders like that code sample that we saw before that you can see the button and some of these large props and things like that. And if you go and add like destructive or turn off large, then that will be reflected in this JSX tab. So you can see button is destructive, no longer says large. Um, and there's also this story tab, which shows you the code sample that was written in the storybook documentation uh, tool to make this demo. This isn't particularly useful for this example, but it is useful for some of the components that um, are controlled components like form components that need to have a parent that manages state. And so um, for those kinds of components, you'll probably wanna look at the story tab to see what kind of things you need to have around the component. Um, just to give you an example, the transfer component is like that. And so you can see that as you control this list here, there's some state that's being managed in React using use state. And so this gives you a clue as to what you need to do to make this like functional and interactive. The actions button here, the actions tab, will show you things that uh, that happen or are logged to the console. Like most of these interactive elements like buttons will log something or kind of indicate that like I've been clicked, this event handler has been, <clears throat> excuse me, has been triggered. And so for some of the things like forms, they also will uh, log things like what kind of payload they send to the event handler. So you can see how to use those. So let's see, I think those are the main features that are useful to take a look at in here in the documentation. I think I'll, I'll just kind of give you a, a tour of the form components because those are very, uh, frequently used components that are nice to have a kind of introduction to. So we have these kind of data input components like um, a regular kind of input field. And we have a few different levels of composition of these form components. And so you'll find things like the checkbox, um, uh, a regular text input, a radio button, things like that. And there are different levels of composition of each of these things. One is kind of just the bare input component. Another level is the input field, which has extra label text and sometimes validation text. And let's see, is there help text? Yeah. So this is an input with some extra features around it, which are useful for using in your application. And then there's also these, um, that same level of thing, but configured to use with React Final Form, which is our preferred way of using forms in, in the applications. And so this is um, a component that um, integrates with React Final Form, which is exported from our UI library. And I'll show you that in a second. You can find the documentation for Final Form here so you can see how to use it more and I'll, I'll post a link to uh, that information. But uh, React Final Form provides useful tools like um, spying on the, the values that are in the form at the time, um, 
doing validation of the things and then handling the, the data inside of it. It's a really useful thing. And if you're making forms in your application, you should use this. And so we have components that are built to be used inside of um, the final form forms and field components. And so I'll show you a demo of how to use one of these because it'll show you how our UI library uh, interacts with React Final Form and some of the validator functions that we have for that. So um, in here in my demo application, I've set up a form demo. Let's see. I think I'll move this out of the way, add that, and then add and import it. That shows you just this, this input field here. So here's the code for it. Um, we import a few things from the UI library here. So React Final Form is one of them. We want to import that. Uh, input field is another one of them. And you can browse the kinds of um, the different things that you have here. You can see that input field FF is what we're looking for. And you can see a, a demo of how it's used here. Um, these are a few validator functions that we use for um, validating the, the values inside the inputs. And here's a, a button component from the UI library to make the submit button. And so inside React Final Form, there are the form and field components that we can either um, access here or from React Final Form dot field or React Final Form dot form, which you might see. And this is very similar to uh, an exercise that you'll be doing in a moment. So uh, I think it'd be useful to have a look at some of these things. So inside the, the form, these, this is some pretty typical React final form logic. And you can kind of see how that works in the documentation there. We set up the form with an on submit, and then it passes the handle submit function that we make a regular form with. Here's the React final form field. And as the component inside that field, we use our UI library input field final form component. All of the components with FF at the end are the final form thing. And so we can see in our UI demo, we have this input field. And it comes with this initial value. Um, it comes with some validation things. And so it, it has this has value validator that I imported, imported from the UI library. I'll show you where you can find those. Uh, because unfortunately, we don't have a great uh, documentation source for those yet. But we can do these things and submit the form, and it, it calls this handle submit function. So you can uh, take a closer look at those things in the example that you'll do pretty soon. Um, but another thing that I'll just show you before you do those is that there is also this compose validators function that we have here. They can um, compose several validators into one. And so what you need to do for that is compose validators, um, email, and has value. These are two ones that I've imported above. And so now um, it should make sure that this value is a valid email address and that it provides the value. You can take a look. Um, this isn't you know, our, our best documentation here, but you can take a look at this page in the UI validators code to see what's available. I'll post a link to this in the chat to uh, have as a resource. And um, you can consider those things. And so the main resources that you'll want to refer to are the, uh, the storybook documentation here for the UI library. Um, the, you probably won't need the React final form documentation, but it might be nice to look at in the future as you're making your applications. And then uh, this information about validators. 
So I think that covers it for my demo of the UI library. I, I think coming up, you'll have some exercises to practice applying it. And so I'll be around to help answer questions for those things if anything's unclear. And that's all from me. Let's see. Thank you so much, Kai. Thank you um, for the presentation. It's um, I hope uh, you like the the new light the de light demos that use a storybook, and that will be useful for uh, when you're uh, building your applications, and also now for the exercises um, that I will um, that I will uh, show you. Um, and um, I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, I wanted to ask uh, if you were all able to uh, join the GitHub classroom before I start. Um, uh, if not, I shared uh, the link again in the chat, uh, but once you accept that link, um, you will get uh, the material that will be, that uh, you will need to complete this assignment. Um, so this is the resources uh, repository that you will see. Um, it's a template and you will have uh, yours too. Um, with your name attached to it in the end, like it shows here uh once you accept uh the invitation and what you will have to do then uh it's to uh click here um and then copy uh the url uh and go to your um to to your terminal and then um run git clone and then uh paste that uh link um, I won't do it now because I, I have it already. Um, so that will create um, a directory in your local machine uh, with all this information. So you need that uh, in order to do uh, exercises, uh, the exercises of the UI library. Um, so how that would work is to, I'll show you here. Um, and then I will explain what you have to do. Um, actually, so, okay, we have um, the work workshop one, and so you would have to go to that folder. Um, and then as you can see, um, we have all the, um, the folders um, for the assignments and what uh, the one that you need is, is the UI library. And um, you will go to um, the template one. And the template contains, and I will show you, uh, contains all the, the starter code. Uh, so you don't have to, um, um, yeah, so you don't have to create a new application. Um, and I will, uh, demonstrate this uh, in a little bit. Uh, this link um, is also in the resources folder in the template. Um, I will share this. Um, oh, sorry. Where is the chat? Okay. These are the task instructions and um, we have three main tasks. Um, here is just um, a quick recap of um, <clears throat> the design system and the UI uh, library um, and how to um, install. You don't have to do that because um, the template already um, um, contains that dependency. Um, yes, so to check that uh, you you can go to um, your package.json uh, file and 
you'll see that uh, it was already uh, added here, uh, of course. And um, yeah, so <clears throat> this is, um, yeah, okay. So once you're ready, let's say that you are now going to start uh, working on um, uh, working on this assignments, uh, then uh, again, we will ask you to create uh, a branch um, and uh, the details are um, explained here in the get started uh, guide that I shared uh, earlier. Um, so you navigate to your uh, directory like I showed you on my terminal. Um, what you would have to do first is to run yarn um, to uh, get all the packages and dependencies. Um, and then you are ready to, to start working. Um, so task one is basically to add uh, a menu and a menu item component. Um, you can go through this uh, document that has a lot of information, uh, but I'll show you exactly how it looks uh, on the, um, on the uh, in, in the code. Um, so what you would have to do is go to uh, your, your source code and go to the navigation folder. And if you see on navigation, um, you will uh, just concentrate on the uh, add to do uh, comments. So don't worry uh, about uh, a bunch of code here that doesn't uh, contain uh, what you would have to uh, replace. Um, some of this um, concepts will be uh, explained uh, tomorrow, especially for the app runtime, but uh, this is just, uh, um, uh, yeah, how, how to set up the sidebar uh, using uh, the React Router DOM uh, library. Uh, some of you may, uh, may be familiar um, with uh, React Router DOM, uh, but this is, uh, yeah, I won't go over into uh, much detail about this. So here is just telling you to import uh, menu and menu item components. And like Kai, Kai uh, showed, you can just, if you have any um, uh, doubts on how to do it, you can go uh, here and uh, check the um, check the, the docs and you can just easily copy and paste. Um, and the next will be to replace uh, span. Uh, this is fairly easy, uh, but it's just to uh, get you uh, familiar uh, using or importing um, UI components in your application. Uh, so once you uh, do that, uh, you should be able to see uh, this. Um, so a sidebar, um, that will allow you to navigate between three pages, uh, home attributes and form. Um, and so this should be, uh, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, now the second uh, task uh, is under uh, the views uh, folder and you will be working on the attributes.js file. Um, now this is this has uh, more information as it will uh, retrieve or fetch data uh, so that you can see something um, that's uh, rendered uh, once you um, import um, all these components and this is to uh, get you uh, used to or, or to learn how to use a table basically um, so at the um, if you go again to the documentation, you'll be able to see all these components, uh, import uh, everything that uh, is uh, included here. And this is the, the part that you don't have to worry about. Um, uh, it will be um, discussed tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, so here is uh, where you will have to uh, replace the divs um, elements and just um, uh, use the uh, the components instead. Um, and here are some uh, other instructions. This is uh, uh, yeah fairly simple, but also but a bit uh, it uses more components. Um, if you have any questions about any of these um, instructions, just uh, let us know. 
um, once you are um, able to to do that and you think uh, it looks okay, you should be able to see something like this. Um, so this is using, um, like I said, fetching uh, data from uh, the DHIS2 web API uh, that will be uh, also covered tomorrow. Um, and um, that's that's set for task two. Uh, task three, uh, this is uh, pretty much um, something that Kai covered. Um, <clears throat> And that was uh, very uh, useful. Um, I hope as an introduction to the uh, form um, components, um, it uses, like Kai mentioned, um, um, a React Final Form, the React Final Form uh, library, which is a, a preferred uh, library for working uh, with forms and uh, if you're using validators, uh, this is uh, the one that uh, uh, um, we recommend that you use and uh, well, Kai showed you uh, how to find uh, information uh, on that. Uh, this is uh, a bit more complex um, and it will take a bit more time, uh, but the form itself is already set up for you. Uh, so you would have to import uh, the components. And if you see here, it says FF in the end, uh, again, that's uh, referring to the final form. Um, library, you have to import uh, those validators and some of those validators uh, Kai also showed. Uh, so it's to make sure that all the information that uh, the user enters in the input uh, uh, fields are uh, valid. Um, yeah, are, are correct, I guess. And um, this is more like a replacement. You just replace uh, the components. Um, yeah, but you replace the components and also add some validators here, but for every um, line, you would have a comment to it. Um, and uh, finally, then uh, you will be able to add a button uh, to see, uh, yeah, <laughs> to have to have a, you have to have a button in your application. Um, okay, so once uh, you do that, you will see this form. Um, and if everything, if the validators were um, uh, imported correctly and also added uh, correctly uh, in your application, you will see uh, that it's failing if you don't um, provide the right information. So if the fields are empty or um, the email address, it wasn't entered correctly, um, this is how you know that it's working. Um, and uh, once you, uh, he, yeah, here's uh, more information about um, what uh, the task is asking you to, um, to add. Um, and uh, once you're done uh, with this, uh, you can uh, again follow the instructions on how to uh, submit uh, your, um, your assignments. And um, you, like I said, you create a new branch, you work on that, uh, then you uh, open up a request, then we will review it and um, we will add some comments and give you feedback on anything um, on, on, on uh, your assignments. And uh, that's, I think that should cover um, what, um, what you are uh, supposed to do for this, um, for the, for the UI library uh, tasks. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, yes, I did cover everything. Um, this instruction here, once you um, go to the directory, um, you will see that it has, um, yeah, everything that you need, and you need to know about uh, how to go about uh, doing um, the exercises. Um, so any questions? <clears throat> 